welcome back today under physical method we will be talking about the assessment of levels of musculoskeletal injuries or the probabilities and how do we assess it so in this particular uh, section what we will do we will we will majorly understand the injuries and we will try to understand through checklist how do we assess them okay so let us uh, know that what are the tools we are going to learn over here so methods which can be used to assess the levels of musculoskeletal discomfort among the workers we will try to understand that so from here we will be able to get an idea that what is the kind of uh, body parts what are the varieties of body parts right now uh, having any kind of musculoskeletal discomfort which may lead to musculoskeletal disorder so mainly we will be talking about so there are varieties of tool however we will be talk, uh, taking those tools which is commonly used right so we will be talking about pliable very very easy very old tool and commonly used it's a kind of checklist okay so we will understand that we will talk about NIOSH discomfort survey so it's again a very popular tool and Dutch musculoskeletal survey DMS okay so in today's class initially we will be discussing the pliable technique okay so let us begin with pliable so this particular method is assigned for identification the ergonomics hazard and we will try to from this particular checklist we will try to understand if your infected body region is something like you know maybe shoulder or maybe neck or maybe lower back or leg somewhere what are the varieties of probable reasons are there and then it will help us to get a direction that uh, to identify what are the causal factors of it so it's very initial tool initial method which we will we will uh, implement at the very beginning of our study so let us begin so it's a very simple checklist it's a screening tool okay so it's a screening tool you will not get any kind of indexing over here you will understand only the uh, through screening you will understand what are the varieties of body parts which is having problem and what are the probable causal factors associated with that in the workplace or workstation so the list made this uh, it's a checklist so if this particular list is made by you know in 1987 of course this particular group of uh, people like you know uh, Kimlart and uh, Kilbom they are continuously working on this field and uh, there are a lot of further development also happened so the method for the identification of musculoskeletal stress factors which may have injurious effect that we will try to get from this particular checklist this will further highlight the musculoskeletal risks in connection with workplace investigation so as i mentioned we will also get an idea what are the causal issues available in that uh, in that particular region so we will be considering the modifying factor that is the time environment and organization so these are the modifying factors will be there which we will take in consideration so if we look at the we will definitely show you the checklist in total so here we, i would like to mention these are the five body parts okay neck shoulder upper back and uh, upper part of your back so this whole region neck shoulder and upper uh, from back side upper part of your back that is one region elbows forearm of both hands 
is one another region both feet another region knees and hips okay so that is another part so lower and upper and lower back that will have another region so these things are directly taken from the actual tool okay so the items that checked in the workplace assessment of ergonomics hazard and these are the body regions which we are going to check through this particular tool so let us know little more about this particular technique or particular tool the list of the item consists of questions concerning the awkward posture time tiresome work movement so if something is happening very tiring so we will come to know about that as well poor design of tool or workplace and stressful environment or organizational condition to use this pliable technique the injured body regions are need to be located first so you have to have a body map from where we need to understand what are the injured area or discomfort the person who, where the person is finding discomfort so after that the white field so we will show you the checklist then you will understand what is that white field white field on the left hand side of the table of the form are checked according to the questions and injured body region of the individual worker that i am going to show you in the actual checklist so when a question is irrelevant to certain body region and you know if documentation has not been found in literature then represented by a gray area or gray field in this particular checklist you will see the checklist then only you will can understand and you need not to answer for uh, for that particular gray area so uh, in the whole checklist there are some white area there are some gray area so for gray area already it has been evaluated that those need not to be answered only white portion need to be answered so i will show you the checklist so a uh, workplace assessment using the pliable starts with a preliminary observation and introductory interview with the employee so it's not that you know you go and start taking the observation first you have to have some kind of interaction with the employee so here i will give you one more uh, i already discussed it in uh, some other classes that whenever we are talk uh, taking uh, no feedback questionnaire or some uh, no relevant information from the operator you have to keep that in mind you have to have their consent to do or to conduct this study that is the ethical requirement so so every institution will have normally have their ethical board institutional ethical board before you start any kind of human study you know even if it is questionnaire even it is not you know invasive procedure still you need to declare that what you are going to do with those information and how you are going to uh, use it for your academic and research purpose individual information should not be in public uh, that also you need to declare once you write that declaration form then you should get the consent from the participant that is the procedure you should follow so in this case also before you start the experiment you should get the signed informed consent from each participant so the tasks that are conducted for most of the working hours you know uh, suppose they are working from starting from 8 o'clock in the morning so okay and they are oh, no finishing it maybe in the afternoon so uh, this 8 hours you have to uh, do the study so based on the study objective you will decide when and how you are going to collect the information and collect the data the task 
that the worker and the observer looks upon as particularly stressful to the musculoskeletal system that you are going to assess. So, here the opinion from the stakeholders are very very important. Here the stakeholders are the operator or the um, <coughs> worker who are working in that particular situation. So, stakeholders information, stakeholders input is very important in this particular technique. Thus, several pliable form you know you need to fill for each employee. Maybe for an employee there are uh, five tasks or seven tasks or seven job which is difficult and they reported yes this is this then you have to have five or six depending on the number of uh, indication you have to complete it for that single particular individual worker ok. So, Definitely there will be suppose 10 employees and each employee must have indicated some employee 5 uh, you know 5 job, some employee five, uh, 4 jobs or some may be 1 or 2 ok. So, for each depending on their input depending the stakeholders information you have to fill individual pliable form you cannot mix them it is not required it is not possible then it will hamper your data collection. So, depending on the employee and depending on the job that is being identified that particular worker you have to fill the pliable form ok. So, this is very important to you know, mention and important to follow during data collection. Also, we can say this is an you no know, introductory uh, interview it need to be done with the employees because if the employee or the operator does not understand what is the requirement of this pliable checklist they will not be able to contribute. So, initial interview need to be done to understand the what are the major exposed body parts. The preliminary observation need to be done in that particular workplace. It is not that you uh, come back to another place and take the interview. It is always suggested that you conduct the interview at the same place where the work is being carried out. Now, there may be a question some workplace are really dangerous and you need maybe the uh, different kind of safety gear while working. So, those cases based on the scenario based on the situation you have to uh, take decision. Now, these decisions are always you know based on your experience. So, it is advised that you know you take help in those cases from your expert uh, person who is available over there. So, it is always suggested you take uh, the interviews at the same workplace. However, if there is something some, some uh, safety issues or hazardous issues are there and you really cannot enter those some restricted area or something in that case is based on the scenario based on the context you take the decision. Of course, that decision should be associated with your aim and objective of the study. So, the assessment whatever we are going to do uh, through pliable are focused on two major thing. What are these? The task that are conducted for most of the working hours that need to be there. It is not that once in a while that task is being carried out and you are doing the assessment for it or maybe in a whole day shift it is one. No, no not for those cases only if the task is being carried out or conducted by the workers in most of the working hours then those tasks need to be selected. The second is the task that the worker and the observer look upon as particularly stressful to the musculoskeletal uh, system then only you choose the task. So, initial observation, initial 
interview that is very very important and impacting factor of this particular uh, checklist and that will actually uh, give you some impact in the result of the pliable okay so these two considerations need to be there first which task you are conducting for most of the hours of your working hour that task and from the preliminary observation if you find that particular some task which is uh, creating you know uh, which is you find it is stressful to the musculoskeletal system then only you choose that particular task of course as I mentioned earlier that several uh, pliable forms have to be filled for each employee that I mentioned earlier as well. Now if we come to the observe like the procedure this is like this particular slide is explaining that. So let us understand it. So the major bullet points are the major steps and sub bullets are also there. So let us go one by one. So, after observing the ergonomics hazard, what you are going to do with that? So, what you have to do? You have to number the area on the form is checked or the short note need to be made. So, once you look at the form, you will understand that. Okay. So, what are the areas need to be work on or need to be checked further? You have to Tick it. Either you tick them or you keep a short note. Then in the concluding report, the crude you know, dichotomous answers are arranged in order in order of importance, and the answers are collected from the list of ergonomics hazards that can be also used. In summary, what you are going to do? The problems are described in the combination of the answers taken from the list and in modifying sector. So, you have first the observation, then conclusion, then you have to write the summary and there is one more option where you can modify it. So, modifying factors for conduct, you know, concluding report can also be uh, considered or which is in influenced by the duration of task. Of course, if the duration of task is more, you, it has more impact and the quantities of environment or organizational factors. So, duration of task and organizational and environmental factors also can be in, uh, used as a modifying factors. Okay. So, let us start with the understanding how this checklist look like. This is the whole checklist. Okay, This particular checklist has been adopted for this particular presentation from this particular author's it's a textbook. From here we adapted this particular um, figure. However, this table is also available in the original publication of this particular uh, tool. Okay. Now, let us understand it. So, we discussed about these figures, right? So, first figure talks about neck, shoulder and upper part of your back, elbow, forearm and hands that is the second, then feet and knee, knees and uh, hips this part and lower back. So, these are the major five region. So, here is very important thing is so, these are some gray area. First, let us understand the gray areas in this form. So, gray wherever these gray areas are, you need not to worry about it. Only your concerns are these white areas. Okay. See, you have numbering. Hmm? So, these are the white areas what you need to answer. Now, here are the list of factors. So, we have total 17 factors. For each body part, for each portion or modi identified portion, you can have 
all the combination of these 17 factors. Okay. So, I will give example of the first portion. Okay. Suppose you can understand that first question is not required for you to get information because it is a gray area. What it says is the walking surface uneven, sloping, slippery or non-resilient. Uh, uh, non okay. So, what does this mean? Of course, if that is the question, your upper back, neck, shoulder is nowhere connected. So, you need not to answer for it. Whereas, the second question, it says that is this space too limited for work movement or work maintenance? Of course, in that case, your neck, shoulder and upper back is connected. Suppose you, you are in a confined zone, you have little lot of restriction in the body movement where you can have an answer yes or no. So, all are dichotomous, okay. So, either yes or no. So, only yes, no situation. So, for, for this particular portion, you can have answer, you can read these questions in detail thoroughly before you go for the interview. Also, see so this particular figure helps you in, you know, in, in understanding that uh, where you should get answer, where you should not get answer. So, all gray areas, you need not to bother that that has been uh, decided or priorly identified that these are not relevant to these kind of questions. Whereas, the only white areas are need to be answered and need to be answered only from these question, not from anywhere else. Okay. So, if you look at the first segment, you need to answer only question number 2, 3, 4, 5. Then there is a long gap like you know 6, 7, 8 you need not to answer. Whereas, again you will be answering for 9, a, B, C, D, 10, A, B, C, D, 11, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the portions, then 14, 15 and 16. Again, 17 is not required for first part. Okay. Why? Let us read the 17. 17 is uh, saying is, uh, no, Priest worked whatever the work they are doing with forearm and hand performed with twisting movement or uncomfortable hand position. So, of course, that is not going to affect your neck, shoulder and upper back. So, that is quite irrelevant for the first part of your uh, body. Okay. So, this way what you need to do? You need to get an answer for yes, no. Yes, no. Okay, all dichotomous answer. So this is the checklist. This is the um, pliable checklist. And how do you use it? Suppose you have the data. Okay, so you have the data. You have filled for um, uh, for one employee. You have five jobs or five tasks the, you have identified, and for each task you have one one pliable worksheet. Okay, you have filled worksheet. Now, what you are going to do with this? What you, what is the kind of interpretation will have? Now, you have one employee. You have maybe another fifty employees. For each employees, such task somewhere will be connected. Then you need to see how many said these factors are responsible to cause the problem then you will get an understanding that what is the causal major causal factors to have those problems so percentage percentage you can calculate also you can go for any other uh, analytical statistics where dichotomous variables are in use 
that is also possible. So, you need to check what is your objective and how do you analyze this particular data. So, here the very important thing you will get some direction that if there is a problem or discomfort in this particular body part, these are the probable causal factor. It is not that confirmatory test, okay. It is not confirmed. It is only going to give you a direction, okay. So, once you get the direction, you have to investigate more. Once you investigate more, probably you will get the confirmatory result. Yes, this is the causal factor and then only you can modify it and get better result. Okay. So, this is the checklist and you, you understood that how you are going to use this particular checklist. It is a very primitive tool. However, it is very effective tool. Now, let us understand what are the advantages of this particular tool. It is a general assessment method. So, uh, learning is very easy. I, I understand by this time you understood this particular tool. If you have a printout of this particular checklist, you can easily start you know, collecting data. It is very easy technique. So, it is it observed uh, the part, the whole or the body and summarizes the actual identification of ergonomics hazards in a few sentences. So, you have some, so these are all detailed sentence, right? So, everywhere. So, you can really understand where the hazards are. Simple and designed for primary checking as I mentioned earlier also an initial investigative method for workplace observer and identify ergonomics hazards. It can be supplemented by other measurements for instance weight and time, questions and observation from other studies. Of course, the organizational factors need to be considered if you need to go for more detail, time of exposure. So, these you can add as per your requirement. So, it is very easy technique, but there are some disadvantages. So, it is not intended to any specific occupational task, not any specific. So, you can have general statement. Many other methods are intended for specific occupation or body region. So, for this case, it is a very generic, very general. So, you may not have specific indication and they can also record more detailed answer. Here, it is not detailed answer. Only you, you understand risk factor is there or not and that to the participatory responses. So, subjective responses. So, here you need to be very clear, careful that how do you consider those results. Okay? So, ex if you are expert in collecting such information, collecting such, you know using such tool, you will get very good result. However, if the person uh, is not that expert in that particular field, may have some kind of wrong information as well. So, experiencing it very important. So, we need to follow some standards and regulation. So, an ergonomic screening tool for assessment of ergonomics condition at workplace has been suggested as a feasible instrument by many other researchers for this particular tool. It is valuable to have a you know a systemic assessment method uh, when doing follow ups and when analyzing how intervention after the onset of on occupational musculoskeletal injuries could be made more effective. So, you have before data, you have after data and you can really compare it that is that uh, is that so if number of yes is very high okay most of the question is on that side so of course it's not all similar still uh, if you have more difficulties your number of yes are more okay so 
then you can compare and you can really have a good understanding what is the impact of that particular intervention. So, pliable follows the standard and regulation of that of the day and although it is a self explanatory subjective assessment method and registering only at the dichotomous level. So, you have no difficulties. It requires a solid understanding of ergonomics. This is very important. It is not that anybody and everybody can use it. You need to know the basic fundamentals of ergonomics. Okay? Without that, we will not be able to use it. To use this particular method, uh, you know, uh, it needs some, some kind of skill and a certain degree of practice is firmly recommended. So, before you go for actual data collection, for many other tools also. So, I always suggest that you go for some pilot data, okay? so you pilot test. So, if you do that successfully, of course, you are ready to collect bigger chunk of data. So, you, you can increase your sample size. So, training already we discussed. For tools, what do you need? You need only pencil, paper, folded ruler and some camera to capture that particular task otherwise uh, you will not be able to collect the correct information there will be because uh, number of data is very high right so uh, later in the laboratory when you come for your you no know, analysis that may create confusion or difficulties okay so uh, that's all for this pliable technique i suggest you take print out it is easily available the original paper is also available in the internet so you please collect the uh, original publication you get the data sheet and you may practice it by yourself and if you find any difficulties we can definitely discuss it in the discussion forum thank you mm -hmm.